Hi guys, welcome to today's video. This is Lauren Smith here and as a lover of theoretical physics, I'm going to go through the solution to 2021's higher level question four. This question is on the mandatory experiment to measure the resistivity of the material of a wire and it's worth 40 marks. So we better get into it. Okay, so looking at question four, this question itself can be roughly split into two different parts. So looking at the first four parts or the first section of this question, we are told that for a wire of length 30 centimeters, which will come in handy later, a student measured the resistance or at different values of temperature theta. And in part one, we are asked to draw a labeled diagram note very important, labelled, of how the apparatus was arranged in the experiment. And this would be an example diagram of this experimental setup. And you must notice that I have tons and tons of labels in there to reiterate my point that this is a labelled diagram. You will lose one mark per every label omitted. So where will you get marks? You shall get three marks for having the resistor but it needs to be in liquid. So that's why it's a good idea to label everything in the diagram. You want to make sure that we're letting the examiner know that this is in a liquid. I've chosen water. You get three marks for the ohmmeter. You get three marks for the source of heat, which is a Bunsen burner in this case. And you get three marks for the thermometer. If you were to not have any labels in here, you would automatically lose four out of a possible 12 marks. So in part two, we're asked how did the student make the temperature of the wire zero degrees Celsius? And this is a very short answer. They would put, say, for example, the wire in a bath of crushed melting ice. The word melting here is extremely important because, as we know, melting ice is of temperature of zero degrees. And this short explanation is worth three marks. So moving on to part three of the question, we are asked to draw a suitable graph to show the relationship between R and theta. We are looking to draw a graph of resistance versus temperature, as resistance is the dependent variable, and therefore it will go on the y-axis. As the value of resistance varies with the temperature values originally set by the student. So for resistant values, or which is measured in ohms, we're going to put them on the y-axis, and for values of theta measured in degrees Celsius, we're going to put them on the x-axis. And if you have time in the exam, it is good to copy these down into your solution booklet, just to make everything as clear as possible for you. So you're not rushing and looking at the paper and then going to the graph and all that. You want to be as calm and just focused as possible. So... Not forgetting to scale, of course, our graphs properly. We label our axes with the proper variable initials, i.e. theta and or, and also the correct units. And for scaling your axes and labeling them properly, you're going to get three marks. That's your first three marks. Now, even though Celsius is not an SI unit, now, the table of values given do not need to be altered like they do in most leaving cert physics experiments. However, it is always wise to check whether they are in SI units or not, or we need to change anything. But we don't in this case. So we can go ahead and plot the points onto the graph as shown in our little points in red here. And for all of the points which are corrected, and if you plot all of the points correctly on the graph, you get your next three marks. Just a little disclaimer, even though Celsius is not explicitly an SI unit, the SI unit for temperature is in fact Kelvin, we can use Celsius as the unit, as the Kelvin and Celsius measurement systems only differ by a constant difference of 273.15. Therefore, the relationship between temperature and resistance is unaltered and will show the same resistance if you were to put these values of temperature in Kelvin, which you are more... Um, than entitled to do, but we want to save time in the exam. And if we put effort into those unnecessary conversions, we could waste time that we could use on other questions. So next drawing the line of best fit, which you can see is in purple here. 
and that will get you three marks. My tips would be to have an even amount of points on the left and right side of the line of best fit at roughly equal distances from each other so it all just evens out. Remember that the line of best fit by definition is the is the cluster of points on that line will show the best relationship between the two variables in question. And my other tip would be when drawing a line of best fit, always use a ruler. You will lose marks if you don't have a really straight, nice line. So a good practice tip, even though you won't get any extra marks for it, always add a title like I've done up here, even if it's a small title, to your graph. You will be drawing at least two, if not more, graphs in the exam. So so we don't want the examiner to get confused because graph paper isn't in a specific solution booklet and they tend to be flying about. So it's easy to get, so it's easy for them to get a little bit disorganized. Moving on to part four, we're asked to use this graph to determine the temperature when the resistance is six ohms. First things first, looking at the graph, I'm just going to mark in where six ohms is on the resistance axis in a different color pen. And I'm going to draw a dotted line from 6 ohms on the resistance axis until I meet the line of best fit, which is roughly here. And I'm just going to highlight that in gold, trying to be as clear as I possibly can. And then to determine the temperature when the resistance is 6 ohms, we're just going to draw this new dotted line, as you can see I'm doing here on screen all the way down until we hit the temperature axis because this will de determine the temperature at 6 ohms. I'm just hitting the axis there for a resistance equal to 6 ohms. We're going to have a temperature which is roughly equal to 55 degrees Celsius. It's just, as you can see here, a little bit over the 50 degrees Celsius mark. So that's going to be my best educated guess. My biggest tip would be to use a ruler in the exam and circle the point in the question as we did on the graph, because you can see my line is a little bit wonky there, but you want your educated guess of the temperature. It's not going to be exactly, exactly right, but we want this educated guess to be as accurate as possible. And now in the marking scheme, it says the temperature is roughly 55.5 degrees Celsius, but you will get marks if you say 55 degrees Celsius, because it is in and around the ra temperature range given within reasonable parameters. Now back to our original question for the final section. And we are told that the diameter of the wire is 2.4 millimeters. And we're asked a couple of questions on this. So in part five, we're asked how did the student measure the diameter of the wire? And you can either answer this in three ways, using a micrometer or digital calipers or vernier calipers. Any of these options will do, and that will get you four marks. However, I'd put down all of them, if you know them, again, on the basis of these temperamental marking schemes. You don't know whether they're going to be really picky one year or just really nice another year. So put down everything you know. Never settle for just the bare minimum. Always push it. We want to maximise our marks. Before moving on to part six or the final part of the question, I want to draw your attention to page 61 of the Formula and Tables book for the resistivity formula. Now in part six, we're asked to calculate the resistivity of the metal at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. First things first, we're always going to write down the formula at hand, which I've just shown you there, which is the resistivity formula. And just by copying this down from the formula in tables book or showing the examiner that you need to use this formula in order to calculate the resistivity will get you three marks. Pretty nice three marks. Again, always put down every single formula you use because more than likely in this exam, you will pick up marks for it. And we need to find the resistance or the cross-sectional area A of the wire or the conducting material, which the metal in question is the wire, and the length of the wire. First things first, we're told that the metal is at temperature equal to 20 degrees Celsius. 
Now looking at the table of values here, we know that at 20 degrees Celsius, that equates to a resistance of 5.6 ohms. So great, we have the resistance. Now moving on to the length. We're actually told the length of the wire in question, and that's equal to 30 centimeters. Or if you convert it into SI units, i.e. from centimeters to meters, that goes to 0 0.3 meters. Now for the cross-sectional area of a wire, which is the area of a circle, i.e. pi or squared, where or is in fact the radius. However, we have the diameter, which is D, I'm going to call it little D, and that's equal to 2.4 millimeters. To calculate the radius, which we will need for the area, we have the diameter and put it into SI units, i.e. from millimetres to metres. So we have D, which is 2.4 millimetres, milli being times 10 to the power of minus 3, over 2, which gives us 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3 metres. If we are to compute the area, which again, the cross-sectional area is that of a circle, which is pi or squared, which is equal to pi multiplied by 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3, all squared, which when we put it into our calculator, remember to use brackets, especially when you are squaring things, and especially if it is in SI units like you can see here. And here is our answer. Cross-sectional area of roughly 4.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters squared. And figuring out the area gets you three marks. Now, just rewriting down this resistivity formula over here, we can now sub in our values to determine the resistivity with 5.60 ohms for the resistance, 4.52 times 10 to the power of minus 6 for the area, and that is in meters squared. And we have 0 0.3 for the length of the wire, which is also in meters. So now we can plug all these values into our calculator and solve for the resistivity. Putting the calculator up on screen, I'm going to input our values in with brackets. The reason why I'm doing this is we have scientific notation and powers involved and we're multiplying things together. So it's just to make it as clear to the calculator as possible which order we want to multiply things by. And here is our answer. It's a load of decimal places, but I would like to put this into three significant figures or two decimal places. Therefore, the final answer is going to be 8.44 times 10 to the power of minus 5 ohms meter. Not forgetting the units, because you will lose marks. It can be incredible up to how many marks you can lose for forgetting units throughout this exam. I've heard some cases where it can be as much as 10% of the whole grade of the exam, which is really, really scary. You're just wasting points. So don't forget them. Your final answer will get you your last three marks in this calculations part of the question.